In this video, we're going to take a look at the alter structure of cells. This is IB 1.2. And again, this is resources for the exams uh, for IB biology starting in 2016. And really what we're doing in, in this video is looking at the different structures that we see inside of both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And we'll also do a little bit of comparison between the two different types of cells as well as plant and animal cells. To start out, a pro prokaryotic cell, um, the DNA is in a concentrated group. Um, enclosed region um, in a non-membrane and bound uh, organelle. So usually you would think of DNA being found in a nucleus, well in a prokaryotic cell it's in a region called the nucleoid region and it's found just free floating within the cytoplasm and we'll see what that looks like in just a second. It doesn't have a true nucleus or membrane bound organelles. It's very much simpler in structure than a eukaryotic cell and some examples would include bacteria and archaea. Um, they don't have compartments or um, a lot of uh, organelles to be able to do things. Most likely they evolved before eukaryotes and there's a lot of uh, research and data that would support this and we'll look at that a little bit later. They're usually quite small in size, about 1 to 3 microns, and they can be found pretty much everywhere. Uh, they are literally almost well, pretty much in every environment on the planet. We're going to take a look at some of the different structures that you would see. Prokaryotes have cell walls. They have a plasma membrane. Um, they have a nucleoid region, so that's where the DNA is. It's a, it's a kind of a clump of the DNA together. Uh, they can sometimes have flagella. It's a tail that can be used for movement. They definitely have a cytoplasm, and as we talked about in our previous video, this is where a lot of those chemical reactions are taking place. Ribosomes, a couple different locations of ribosomes here. You can see the small little dots obviously very important because they're being used to produce proteins and they can have pili which are also helpful in movement and attachment as well. And looking at some of these structures in a little bit more detail on what specifically they do, you could find this information in your textbook online. Uh, I'll give them to you right here as well very quickly. Cell wall, rigid structure, the plasma membrane, and the nucleoid. If you'd like more time to write these down, please go ahead and pause the video. Flagella, cytoplasm, ribosome, and pili. How pro prokaryotic cells uh, divide or reproduce is by a process called binary fission. And in binary fission, the DNA is coiled up. Um, it's usually pretty coiled and condensed uh, in that nucleoid region as it is, but it coils up a little bit more. It replicates, and we will actually learn the steps of DNA replication in prokaryotes a little bit later on in the year. The DNA gets pulled to opposite sides, as we see in step three. The cell wall starts to pinch in or to grow uh, together in order to prepare for this division. The cell wall actually divides, causing the cell to divide, and we end up with two cells that are exactly the same, meaning that they have the same DNA because that DNA was copied, um, has the same uh, copies of ribosomes, plasmids. Uh, we can also call these daughter cells because they are um, daughters of this original parent cell. And so from one cell, we get two cells. And this is one of the reasons why bacteria, uh, as examples of prokaryotes, can divide and multiply so quickly and spread so quickly is because they're creating exact copies of themselves. Um, and really what prevents them from continuing to overtake the planet is availability of resources, and that would also include space. If you've ever grown bacteria on auger plates, you'll probably have noticed that they grow very quickly at first. And then as time goes on, that growth and expansion slows because, one, there's less and less nutrients available in that auger and also less and less space. Here's those steps that we just talked about to binary fission. The eukaryotic cell is quite a bit different. Um, it actually has DNA contained within the membrane of the nucleus. It does have membrane-bound organelles. Uh, eukaryotic cells include both plants and animals, and they actually do contain some different organelles that we'll talk about. Um, they're usually quite a bit larger than prokaryotic cells, 10 to 100 microns. Um, they have a compartment-type structure, concentration of enzyme and substrates, specifically in the cytoplasm. Um, they also have some organelles uh, that can help to keep uh, potentially damaging substances or waste separate from the rest of the cell. Um, they are able oftentimes to maintain their internal environmental conditions and uh, the organelles within the cell themselves can also move. 
So let's take a closer look at some of these different organelles. We have the nucleus, which is different than the prokaryotic cell. Nucleus is where that DNA is actually kept. The nucleolus, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. You can also see sometimes smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the difference between the two is rough has ribosomes attached. The smooth does not have ribosomes attached. The Golgi apparatus, ribosomes again, mitochondria, extremely important, and lysosomes. Um, again, we'll go through these uh, different organelles pretty quickly. Go ahead and pause the video if you want time to write these down. The lysosome, the nucleus, the nucleolus, the rough ER, the Golgi apparatus, a ribosome, and mitochondria. Now, in looking at similarities and differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, a lot of these we've already talked about, um, include some examples. One of the things that's new here is the size of the ribosomes. Prokaryotes have ribosomes that are 70S, whereas eukaryotes have ribosomes that are 80S. And it's really just the, the size of the ribosome. Um, ribosomes are made up of R RNA, as we'll talk about and learn about a little bit more later, as well as some proteins, and so it's the size of the ribosomes. They do have a number of things in common, uh, cytoplasm, ribosome, DNA, and plasma membrane. And those are things that we talked about that all cells have uh, back in video 1.1. Now, eukaryotic cells can be found as either plant or animal cells. And they definitely have some differences uh, between them. And some of the biggest differences, or the, the most pronounced difference, is the shape of these cells. Plant cells have cell walls. And as a result, they have a very rigid uh, outer structure. Animal cells are a more rounded shape. They don't have a cell wall, so they're able to, to uh, move or, or change shapes slightly, and so they're more bendable or flexible because they don't have that cell wall, and as a result, result they're usually more rounded or oval-shaped. One of the other big differences between plant and animal cells is plant cells have chloroplasts. And chloroplasts are the organelles that actually um, go through the process of photosynthesis in order for plants to produce their own energy, sugar, and we'll learn about that process a little bit later. Animal cells lack that, and so as a result, animals have to ingest their energy, uh, eat energy from another source, whether it be plants or another animal. Um, one of the other major differences between plants and animals is plants have a central vacuole. You can actually see it rather well in this video, or in this image right here. This central vacuole can be used to store um, usually water, um, but it can also store food or waste sometimes. And they usually almost always have a large central vacuole, but they can also have other small vacuoles. Animal cells do have vacuoles, but they're much smaller, and they don't have a single pronounced large central vacuole. Something that animal cells have that plant cells generally do not is something called a centriole, and this helps with the division of the, of the animal cell. Um, lysosomes, as we previously talked about, is another organelle that's usually just found in animal cells, sometimes in plant cells, but not as common. Um, and so those are some of the big differences between plant and animal cells, um, and those are outlined here. As well. So that is it for uh, 1.2 in looking at uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes and plant and animal cells. If you need additional information, your textbook is a great place to turn to. They have some nice images and descriptions of these different organelles in even more detail, uh, as well as there's lots of resources online as, uh, in addition to my website.